Now, in 2011, private equity investors closed $3 billion worth of deals in Africa. That amount is still increasing as the continent promotes a promising environment for private equity. Joining us now for more on deal flows in Africa is Ponmile Osibo, who is an analyst from the Africa Venture Capital Association. Morning, Ponmile. Uh, whenever there's activity that is significant and uh, needs to be analysed properly, we have an association. So we have uh, an association that has grown up and developed. Just give us the context for that association and uh, what it does. Okay. Well, I represent the African Venture Capital Association and our role across Africa is to promote, stimulate and develop the private investment across Africa. And we do that through four pillars. One is we provide credible research for the industry. The second is we provide networking opportunities. And then the third being advocacy. So we speak to regulators and government officials. And then the fourth pillar is training. We provide training for local institutional investors and fund managers across the continent. Mm -hmm. So what we, what we do is we we deliver this credible research, which I'm sure we'll discuss as we continue. Yeah, well, let's give us a picture of how much private equity there has been. The picture is that uh, the flows of private equity into Africa are, have been strong and, and have increased uh, dramatically. Yes, post-crisis, we've seen the levels of investment into Africa increase, and we've seen that grow steadily. So in this year, it's estimated, in 2012, it's estimated that 1.4 billion was raised for funds in Africa. That's in dollars. Dollars, yeah, 1.4 billion dollars, increasing slightly from 1.3 in 2011. And we expect that trend to continue. For example, Ethos closed uh, their $800 million fund recently, and we expect other funds to continue to raise in markets. So that number will increase. Where's all this money going into? Well, it's going, it's going across the continent. It's not just focused on South Africa, as some people expect. We've seen a lot of deal activity in Nigeria and West Africa, for example. There is some deal activity going on in East Africa. For example, recently, Abraj closed a deal for fan milk in Ghana, which has subsidiaries in other West African countries. So that's quite a big regional play. Mm. It must be a factor that the stock markets in Africa generally are pretty small, pretty illiquid, one or two big companies. Uh, you know, the Johannesburg Stock Exchange uh, is more than the rest of the continent combined by some measure. This is an opportunity for, for private equity because there isn't the opportunity to raise capital on, on stock exchanges, really. Yeah, that's true. What, what we see is beyond the JSC, a lot of other markets are illiquid. But what private equity investors do, or the fund managers do, is they look, they're very creative about how they look to exit. So it's not always on the stock market. They look to sell to trade buyers, to private investors, or sometimes to other private equity firms. What about uh, the sectors that they're in the most, and are there sectors that they're about to get into which they haven't been in yet, these private equity? Okay. Traditionally, you've seen a lot of activity in the financial services sector, in manufacturing and industrials, and that trend is continuing. But added to that, we're seeing a lot more involvement in the agriculture space. Obviously, the fast-moving consumer goods, that story will continue to play out. But we're seeing more specific funds being raised in healthcare and technology, for example. Now, one of the comments that's been made is that the reason the continent is so attractive is there's less competition here. But that's going to rectify if there's such demand and there's such interest, there, there soon will be a great deal of competition. There will be competition, but I would like to say to mitigate that, there is also a lot of opportunity across Africa. If you take Nigeria, for example, there are over 160 million people. The economy is, is estimated to grow at 7% GDP. And what you continue to see, there are more opportunities. For example, the power sector has opened up. So that is a great opportunity. And this, you see this trend being played on across in Ghana, for example, or in East Africa, Nairobi, or even in Egypt. It's risky too, though. Uh, a lot of these economies, the infrastructure is, uh, you know, like gold mining companies go and often they have to build the infrastructure themselves. So is private equity involved uh, in that way, which is beyond the way it would be involved perhaps in other continents? Yeah, we see private equity investors are very, you know, they're very innovative about how they, ha how they mitigate risk. So they do this in, in different ways. Before they go in, they look at the company, make sure that due diligence is done extensively. But in it, they also instigate what we call environmental, social and governance issues. They, they tackle those. So these, they, they mitigate those risks, for example, you know, making sure there's, there's enough safety in the mines, for example. Innovative technologies are deployed to create value because mm -hmm. they're looking for value beyond financial returns as well. That's a key element of private equity mm -hmm. in Africa. The other thing that strikes one, the, the great opportunity that's coming, is the growing middle class. Yes. Uh, as, as countries uh, become more democratic, 
as they grow, that middle class grows. Now that must present uh, a whole range of opportunities for a private equity investor. It does, and private equity investors are very innovative and savvy about, they look at the demographics, but beyond that, they also have on-country teams that are analyzing the country and looking for opportunities constantly. And you can see this is reflected in the returns that private equity investors have deployed over the years. When we look at the Cambridge Associates benchmark that we collaborated with on African private equity, you can see that over the past 10 years that the investors have returned to the managers have returned to their investors 11.2%, 11, 11 which is comparable to their emerging markets, Latin America and emerging Asia. Mm. You mentioned the pillars of, of your association, uh, research, networking, training. What sort of training are you doing? Well, we, for example, we provide training to African institutional investors. Those are mainly pension funds across the African continent. Because what we, what we realize is that we need to allow fund managers to access local capital. So we educate the, the local institutional investors on private equity as an asset class to help them understand the benefits from a risk diversification point of view, but also from a developmental point of view. Because private equity is known to be a tool for growth across con across the African country continent. Mm. How many of these investors are purely African investors or are they all already based somewhere else and now this is an extension? Are there any purely African private equity majority funds? majority of the private equity funds are purely Africa, mm. but we are seeing an increase of the global investors coming into Africa. For example, Carlisle have set up a sub-Saharan African fund, mm. KKR are also looking at deals across Africa, but majority of them are purely African funds. Clearly.